Hey friends. So quick word, I'm on a lunch break. I just showered and got myself together. That's been a part of my new routine. Like, and if you guys see the light, like being funny, I have my patio door, patio, what's a patio? I have my patio door open because it feels so good outside. It's like literally 56 degrees. So it feels like cold here in Texas, but sunny at the same time. So the door is like closing and opening. So it's like changing the lighting. But I just wanted to jump on really quick because again, just in my quiet time with God, just reflecting back over my life and like the things that I've been through and so forth. And one thing the Lord put on my heart to speak to you guys is that everybody's struggle allowance and everyone's favor allowance is different. Everyone's struggle allowance and everyone's favor allowance is different. Favor is not fair. We will never know all of the plans that God has for our lives and why he allows certain people to go through uh, certain things and other people not to, but our struggle allowance and our favor allowance is different. And what this, how this word came about is just like in my quiet shower time just now, I was talking to God and I was praying for people and praying for those around me and praying for things personally um, in my personal life and all of these things, right? And I thought back to something my mom told me when I was 19 years old. I think I was 19 or 20. And I remember I had just graduated high school because you graduate when you're 18, right? So I had just graduated. I actually, yeah, I was 18. So I had graduated high school um, and I lived in Florida at the time. I was born and raised in Miami, Florida, graduated um, from a high school in Miami, like grew up there, born and raised my whole entire life. So a year after um, I graduated high school, I moved to, well, the whole family moved to from Miami, Florida to Clearwater, Florida, which is like in the Tampa Bay area uh, because my mom was there. And I remember moving there and looking for a job. My very first job, I worked at Ross, right? Like fresh out of school. I started working like uh, the month after I graduated high school. Actually, yeah, like the month after I graduated high school, I started working at Ross, the, the clothing store, right? I only worked there for a very short period of time. Um, and I also worked at Winn-Dixie Supermarket. This was all when I was 18 years old. I worked both at Ross and I worked at Winn-Dixie, which was a supermarket back then. But after a year, when stop, hold on guys. I had to put this chair there so the door won't close so after a year we all like the whole family my sisters uh my brother like all of us moved to uh Clearwater Florida to be with my mom or to be close to my mom and I remember looking for a job in Clearwater and I was gonna try to apply to like Walmart or you know stores right and I remember what my mom told me she said you're not going to do that. And I was like, why not, mom? It's a job. She's like, you're right. It's a job. Somebody has to do it, but you don't. And I was like, okay. She literally, she said, somebody has to do it. She's like, it is a job. And she wasn't, she's like, I'm not down talking people that work at Walmart or anywhere. She's like, someone has to do it, but you don't. That stuck with me my whole entire life. I am now 36 years old and I still remember my mom telling me someone has to do it as in work at Walmart and these stores, but you don't. And after she said that, I started looking uh, at jobs in like doctor's offices and like corporate jobs and things like that, even though I didn't qualify for any of it. <laughs> Again, I was 19. So the only job experience I had was from Ross and I only worked there for like a month and then when Dixie and I only worked there for like a month. So I didn't have any job experience, right? Not like that. But when my mom said someone has to do the job, you don't, it changed my mindset and it didn't make me feel like I was powerful or higher than anybody else or I'm like, you know, up there. 
it just made my mindset shift to, I don't have to do it. Even though I don't have experience that I don't have to do these jobs. Like this is not what, th these are not my only options just because I don't have experience. And I didn't know back then, but my mom was speaking life into me from the word of God, because God tells us nothing is impossible through him, right? Nothing is impossible for him. Like he favors us in so many different areas and his whole word speaks upon impossible things that he can do and how he favors the, the ones he loves and all these great things that God can do. But I wasn't close to God back then. So I didn't realize at the time that my mom was literally speaking favor over my life. But that one thing stuck with me and I stopped looking at, um, I stopped applying to stores and stuff and I started applying to like corporate positions, doctor's office, um, whatever, uh, corporate call centers, just different things, even though I didn't qualify for any of it. And I remember this uh, mental health facility called me back. And I went in to interview with them and I will never forget the lady's name was Mary, go figure, who is actually, we're friends on Facebook today. And she's one of the best managers I've ever had. But Mary interviewed me, okay? Mary, and which that's a word in itself because the Lord chose, the Lord God chose Mary to carry Jesus. And she didn't have any experience. She was a virgin. She never carried a child a day in her life, okay? That's a whole different revelation. But Mary interviewed me. And I remember her asking me all of these questions, y'all. Interviewing was even new to me. I wasn't good at it, but I was smart. And I knew how to, to present, like how to tell someone who I am, like who I was, well, I am, I'm still the same person, but how to tell a person about me without bragging on me, but literally telling them what's on my heart. I knew how to put that into words in front of anybody, right? So I was really honest with her. She had my resume. She saw my background and she said, I'm going to hire you as an intake specialist. So basically I would have my desk in her office um, and people that were struggling with mental health issues would call in or come to the clinic. And it was my job to evaluate them and place them on a scheduler. And it was up to me to determine who had a more severe need and needed to be seen earlier and who could wait. So this was like a big thing that was left up to an 18, a 19 year old with no experience. Okay. Even, and this was like serious mental health issues. Like when they came to our clinic, I would sit with them and there was a glass in between us. So it was literally like a jailhouse because you just didn't know what these people were capable of. And, you know, it was for protection. So I would go out when they came and scheduled an appointment with me. I would go out and sit in this room and they were supposed to come in the room and tell me their issues. A glass was in between us. And it was up to me to determine how quickly they should be seen or put them on a wait list. And that wait list was long. So this was a big thing. But I remember her telling me, I'm going to hire you. And if you could learn the system in two weeks, I'll keep you, right? If I couldn't learn the system, I was done, right? So I said, okay, cool. That system was so difficult to use because think about it. This was not like today's medical systems that are more tech friendly and all that. No, these were like difficult systems, medical billing and coding, enter this code, do this. Do it was difficult, especially for somebody who had never worked on a computer or in an office a day in her life. But I learned that system. God showed me favor and I learned that system in a week. And I was uh, brought on permanently with them. And I will never forget, I used to always tell this story when I went on interviews after I worked at this company because she, Mary gave me a chance and she didn't know me from, from anything. She just took a chance on this 19 year old little girl, okay? At our board meetings, we would all be sitting at this long table in the boardroom and I was like the, I was the youngest person at the board meetings. And I remember one of the older men calling it out. He was like in his seventies and he's like, you're the youngest person in here. And I think I was, uh, there was only two black women <laughs> that worked at the company that was on my team, so to speak. And I remember just sitting at this boardroom with all these corporate people. 
and I was 19. Everybody else working there was in their 30s, 40s, 50s. They had been there forever. But because of God's favor, this door opened to me. And that was my first real corporate job. And that's actually what pushed me into going to school to get my uh, bachelor's in psychology. I went uh, to college and I got my associate's degree in entrepreneurship and business and then my bachelor's in psychology. But that's what pushed me into psychology because it was my face with itching Holy Spirit. It was so fascinating seeing people come in with so many different mental disorders. And I didn't even know back then that God was exposing me to the, the dark side, to spiritual darkness and how this thing, these things operate. But it was fascinating to me to have people come in and sit with me. And I, I'll never forget this um, one um, client was saying, you know, the devil was telling them to jump off of a highway and all of these things. And they really needed help. And they would tell me these stories. And I was so taken aback, but so intrigued at the same time, not even knowing that God was using even these moments to not only show me how favor and grace and mercy works, but to also show me how darkness operates. So the, God was speaking so loudly back then. And this is something that I'm really not realizing until now, like in my older age, right? Um, but that was my first corporate job. And what I'm saying uh, at what I'm trying to get at as I release this message, um, as I was in my quiet time talking with the Lord, is that favor allowance and struggle allowance, it's different for all of us. You don't have to feel like you have to struggle just for God to bless you. Okay. And many of us go through that. We see people struggling and they're sending in prayer requests and it makes us feel bad for being where we are. You don't have to feel bad for God favoring you. And don't be afraid to testify to those things. If God has blessed you with a new job, a new car, a new husband, a new wife, don't be afraid to testify to those things just because the people around you are struggling. Everyone's struggle allowance and favor allowance is different. And God allows different people to go through different struggles because he's trying to do something different in them. Our stories aren't the same. Just don't allow those things to make you uh, be prideful and, and boastful, but stay humble. But you don't have to feel bad because God has opened doors of favor to you. All of us have went through struggles in one way or another, but our struggles aren't the same. But people will try to make you feel bad for not struggling the same way they did or because they have a more in-depth story or they probably slept in the car or on a bench in the cold and you did it. So what? I still struggled. My struggle was just different. God didn't give me the struggle he gave you. There was something else he needed to teach you. There was a different way he needed to mold you than what he needed to do to me. So our struggles are different, but we've all struggled. Our favor is different, but we've all been favored one way or another. But don't feel bad because God is choosing to favor you at this time in your life or because your struggles may not align with someone else's and they're seeing worse. So you can't celebrate what God is doing in your life because the people around you are struggling. The devil is a lie. People overcome by the word of our testimony. So as God blesses you, talk about it. As you're going through the struggle, talk about it. Because those that are going through struggle and dark times right now, darkness doesn't last forever. It's just for a season. It's just for a time. But talk about it. Pave the way for the promises that God has spoken over your life. Don't just wait until the favor door opens and you want to talk about it. No, talk about being laid off. Talk about losing your house. Talk about losing your marriage. Talk about having no finances because sooner or later you're going to be talking about the abundance that God has blessed you with. Don't feel bad for where you are regardless of where it is, is what I'm getting at. We were all raised differently. God opens different doors for all of us. We are not the same people. Our thumbprints are different for a reason. Our stories that God has written for us from beginning to end, they're different for a reason. Some people may have choices in one area and another person does not. Their, their option may be exactly what God is presenting them with while another person has choices. So what? Our stories aren't the same, but embrace where you are. Embrace where you are. God knows what struggles you need to go through to mold you and to refine you and to get you to that place that he's designed for you. He knows. And all of our struggle allowances are different. What he gives us as struggles, it's different. The amount is different. What he gives us as favor, 
the amount is different, but don't be afraid to pave the way for your promises as you're going through the struggle. And also don't be afraid to talk about how God has blessed you, the new house, the new job, the new car, whatever, as long as you're not being boastful or prideful, you can talk about it. We overcome by others' testimonies, whether that testimony is hitting your face on the floor. When we hear those testimonies and people are going through this, that, and the third, it makes us not feel so alone. And we know that God is not just punishing us for something. We're all going through it. Even though his word tells us this already, he tells us in his word that your brothers and sisters are going through the same thing. They're enduring the same struggles you're going through. And I'm uh, paraphrasing. But when we hear it from someone, when someone's talking about how they went through a divorce, how they're hurting, how they lost everything, it helps the next person. When someone talks about their favor and how God blessed them and how they used to be broke, but now they're here, it helps other people. You guys have had a chance to see my journey and you're still walking it with me. You've seen me at my lows. You've seen me at my highs. I've shared everything God has allowed me to share with you guys. You saw when I got laid off, but you also saw when God blessed me and opened a door and how I asked him for a break uh, before that layoff. I was like, Lord, I'm tired of working here. I need a break. I got laid off, but I'm the one that prayed the prayer. I didn't expect the, the break to come with a layoff, but so what? God doesn't answer exactly how we want him to answer. And still in my layoff, there was a blessing in it. Blessings. And I, to I told you guys about that. As I was interviewing for the position that I have now, I work at a law firm. I'm not qualified for this. I've never worked in law. I feel like an attorney that never took the bar. God blessed me with a good salary. He blessed me with a good team. And I'll never forget, you guys walked with me that whole way through. When I got laid off, when I was going through the interview process, uh, and when I got the job, you guys walked with me that whole way through and I shared it with you guys through the process. And I'll never forget that when the Lord had me get on and let you guys know I got the job, right? I got the job and I gave my testimony. When I tell you so many people sold into me based on that word, I was so confused because I, I recorded the word and I uploaded it when I got the job. I recorded the testimony, uploaded it, and I left it right there. So many people were sowing monetary seeds into me. I got confused and I was like, Lord, did they, did I say I didn't get a job or something? I said, because they're sowing so much monetary blessings, so many monetary blessings into me. I was confused. I thought like maybe I said I didn't get the job or I mis misquoted something and I was confused and God was like, no, they heard exactly what you said, but I'm telling them to sow on good grounds because they're going to be blessed too. He was like, I'm the one telling them to sow into you. Yes, they heard you say you got a job, but I'm telling them to sow into this word because they're next, because they have the same blessings. I was confused. I was like, I've never had so many people sow into me so much. And I took those seeds and God had me give it back to his kingdom the way he saw fit. So it wasn't even just for me. It was God had me so into so many different areas and so many different people. But I was confused because during my ministry, I had never experienced monetary seeds to that extent. I'm like, did they not hear me? God was like, they heard you, but they are hearing, they're listening to what I'm saying to do. Accept the blessings. He was saying, accept it. So even that favor surprised me. And I was like, man, I was like, wait a minute. And God was like, I'm telling them to do this. Do not block blessings that I'm telling my kids to sow on to. And you guys never hear me say, if this word hits you, sow into it. I don't got to do that because God will tell you to sow into a word. And I tell y'all that all the time. Pay attention to people who give a word or prophecy. Prophet, prophecy, whatever. Some of them prophesy, not prophesy, but pay attention to people that give you a word and they say, if this uh, if this is for you, sow into this word, you don't got to tell me to sow into nothing, ma'am or sir, because I have a father that will lead me on where to sow so that I'm sowing on fertile ground. I want to reap a harvest. I don't want to sow on ground that's not fertile. So pay attention to those people. But God had to check me. He was like, they heard you but they're listening to me. I, I sent them to sow on this word. He was like, I sent them to do this. So don't feel bad for where you are, whether you are in a struggle season or an abundant season. Testify on both because both testimonies help people. 
He does not say in his word that people overcome by the word of good testimonies. It's testimonies in general, whether it is good or bad. People don't feel so alone. When it's bad and you're talking about what you're going through, people can relate. And they, they're like, okay, God, now I understand like many of your children are going through this. People can relate. When it's an abundant testimony, people can relate. They want to get there too. So both testimonies, whether struggle or abundant testimonies, they're good. And they can be used for the good of God's kingdom and used to give him glory. But don't feel bad for being where you are. And for those of you that are getting ready to walk through favor doors, don't feel bad because your friends may not be walking through it or because your friend, your family may still be struggling. They are afforded the same opportunity that you are. The door to, the, to God's kingdom is open for everybody. Many are called, few are chosen. God's been calling on a lot of those family members and friends for a long time. They hear them, but they don't answer. So therefore they're not chosen. But everybody is afforded the same opportunity when it comes to the kingdom of God. God does not shield anyone from getting into his kingdom, from coming to him. Everybody's afforded that same opportunity. So as you walk into this blessed door, doors, as you walk through these blessed doors, do not feel bad. Testify to the goodness of God. Because best believe I'm going to testify every blessing that comes, the struggles that he has me speak on, I'm going to testify to it. I am going to testify to it. It doesn't matter what anybody else feels. I remember <laughs> just recently, not too long ago, I realized a person that was um, on my live, like trying to literally aggravate me. And I don't know if you guys remember, uh, I was doing a live before and one of the, the subscribers were like, get to the dream, um, Nina, da, da, da. And I went off on them. I'm like, no, I'm here to fellowship my brothers and sisters in Christ. Do not rush me on this live. And I had to let them know who I was. Okay, I found out later because God will reveal enemies to you. That's why I don't know. Play with a child of God. I found out later that person who was going by a different name um, on their YouTube profile was actually a person that used to have a channel on YouTube and release prophetic voices that used to listen to me all the time. They deleted their channel. <laughs> and that's a whole different word I have to release that I was talking to God about, but they deleted their channel and they were trying to aggravate me on purpose. Okay, God will reveal to you who's really like, who's behind the veil, so to speak. But this person had a channel and they used to watch me all the time. And this person started to have a jealousy towards me. And one thing, one thing God revealed to me is that this specific person uh, would say, I don't think uh, Nina's a true woman of God because, you know, on many of her words, she's like, oh, God bless me with a new apartment and da, da, da. How does that not make me a child of God? I'm testifying to the goodness of my father. Not once have I ever boasted. But God revealed that person to me. They don't know that I know, but you don't play with a child of God because God will take the darn baby. God will remove that veil so you can see exactly who's hiding behind the screen. Never once, yeah, every apartment that I've lived in since I've lived in Texas in 2019 is when I moved here. God has blessed me with a brand new apartment every single move. Yes, he has. And I will testify to that. Not to be boastful, but to boast on God and how good he is. Every single time. And since he's blessed me with a new apartment all the time, I always expect him to do it again. I, I sure do. And for some reason he does it, then okay, I, I, I'm like Paul. I've learned to be content in all situations. I've lived in old apartments before. But God has showed me what he's doing for me and what he can do for others. So yeah, now that he's done it for me over and over and over, I expect new apartments every single time. New houses every single time because God's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. So yeah, I'm in expectancy all the time of brand new. Yes, I am. But if he decided not to bless me with a new apartment or a new house or a new whatever, I'd be okay. As long as I have God, I'm good. But best believe I will testify to it. 
but you have those that look at your testimony and they see it as jealousy because their heart posture isn't right. And this is why God will allow them to keep going through a struggle until they understand what he's trying to do through them. But as God takes you through this journey and through this era that you are, you're going through, don't feel bad for the blessings that he's about to bestow upon you. Don't feel bad. Testify about it. Just don't become boastful and don't become proud, prideful. But testify to his, his name. Testify to his goodness. Give him the glory. How everybody else feels, that is on them. But that young lady didn't think God would reveal to me who she was. I know who she is. She deleted her whole channel. And one thing about God, he ain't going to give you, he's not going to give you prophetic words and say, okay, delete your, delete all the words. They're now in void. Ha! The Lord only tears down temples when something is, something within that temple is defiled. <laughs> so that's a whole nother word. That's a whole nother word. Even though my mom is the person that said someone has to do the job, you don't. Even though that came from my mom, the Lord was speaking to her so loudly even back then. Someone has to do the jobs, absolutely. But if God is not calling you to do that specific job, go in the direction that he's calling you to and don't feel bad about it. Our struggle allowance and our favor allowance, they're different. I've been through struggles. I've hit my face quite a few times. I've been on my way to hell. Absolutely. I'm not there anymore. And I don't feel bad for what God is pushing me into and the blessings and the doors that he's opening. I've talked to you guys about how I used to have $14,000 of debt. God supernaturally paid that off. My, my credit cards were 13,000 something in 2021. God gave me a dream. And in the dream, an angel said, you're about to be debt free. A few months later, about three months later, my debt was completely paid, supernaturally deposit into my account for over $14,000. And I will never forget that. And I'll always testify to that. But I had to struggle first. I never missed a beat with my tithe. Anytime when I got a bonus and I was like, oh, Lord, I could pay off like half of a credit card with this or two credit cards. He said, you want to pay off two credit cards? You want to pay off all your debt? I said, all my debt. He said, and sow that, uh, sow that bonus into the church for first fruits and put a blessing to it. So I sold that money and I said, I'm going to be debt free. And I sold that whole bonus into a church. And to change church at the time with Pastor Darius Daniel. That's the church I was attending at that time. I am credit card debt free and I will boast on my father every time because I was struggling back then. I had went through a divorce, didn't have no, no furniture in my brand new apartment. <laughs> that apartment was small, it was new, but there was no furniture. I could hear everybody's door slam outside the apartment because there was no furniture that like it was hollow in the inside. So the sounds bounced from wall to wall. That's not my story anymore. So when I share, it's to testify to God's goodness. I don't miss a beat with tithing. I don't miss a beat when God tells me to, um, to, to sow here or sow there, to give an offering. Offering is different from tithing. I don't miss a beat. When God tells me, release this word on your ministry, I'm obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I've seen what God can do with nothing. I've seen it. He's been too good to me not to testify. He's been too good to you not to testify, but testify in the struggle and in the abundance and watch God work. Somebody has to do the job. You don't. Don't feel bad when someone tells you, just take that job. You need something. When God, if God told you to wait and don't accept the job and your next job is going to pay you six figures and until that job knocks at the door, don't accept, then you better heed God's word. I don't care what people, I don't care what company calls you and offers you a job or what friend and family member is telling you to take it just because it's something right now. If God told you I'm sending you a six-figure salary and that's the next job you go accept, you better wait on it. People can call you every name in a book. Okay. I heard what my father said. Now, if he tells you take the job, take it. I worked at Ross, Winn Dixie. I worked at a grocery store right, right out of high school. But after that, God just opened. He opened doors every single time. 
but I've also made sure I've never, ever been a stingy person. I've always been quick to give. I like to see people smile. I don't like to see people struggle. So I've always been quick to give. That's just changed a lot because now God is like, you don't give unless I tell you to give. And I'm going to tell you who to give to, how much to give to, when to give it to. He changed because I used to just give, give, give. God was like, no, you're not even sowing on good ground, giving all this out. But he knew my heart. But when he taught me the right way to do it, nah, I'm not just giving out like, no, I'm going to sow into where God's leading me because it's good ground. So I don't want to make this too drawn out, guys. I got a couple minutes and um, I got to get back to work. Uh, but I wanted to release this word to you guys because I know it's going to set so many people free. If God told you don't accept that minimum wage job, then don't. But if he told you to accept it, then do it. But like my mama says, somebody got to do it. You don't. And that has stuck with me my whole life. My mom has never been the perfect mom. Uh, we don't get along all the time, but there's a lot of times she's spoken into my life and God has used her and I'm grateful. She wasn't the perfect mom, but she she mommed the best way she know how. She knew how to do. So that's the word, guys. I love you. Uh, have a great day and we'll talk soon.